Put your best leg forward. You've got a nice bit of solid ground to fit on. Dear, oh dear. Join the Navy and see the world. Don't you like it, mate? Like it? <laughs> Give me sorry holsty, never be time. Oh, well. Makes a change any old hour. Doctor? Aye, aye, doctor. Ryan Davarish, young Sudan. Give me a look. Give me a look. Ritz out <laughs> What a What's that? No, покажите. No, 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 thank you, boss. What I want is a doctor, not a sweetheart. Me, doctor. You a doctor? Well, why not? Minuta. She's a bit of all right, boy. Good is she? She no speak of the English. That doesn't matter, mate. I met a girl once, Spanish. She couldn't speak a word. Oh, we got along fine. <laughs> well, don't stare, mate. It's rude. What's the matter with you? Don't give me a drug, child. See, Charles. What they want to send us to Russia for, I do so. Look at it. Snow and ice. Ice and snow. Хорошо. And what a language. I tell you, Ken, why they can't speak decent English like you and me. That's the trouble with foreigners, mate. They're not like you and me. Here in Russia, you are the foreigners. Thank you. Blimey, he speaks English. <laughs> Calling us foreigners, too. But you are. Oh, I never thought of that. Here, chum, how's it come you speak English? I like it. Have you ever been to England? Oh, yes, I have seen it all. How do you like South End on a bank holiday, eh? <laughs> Wilkes, that big. <laughs> Jenny Deals, beer. <laughs> Blimey. Makes you feel homesick, eh? I did not go to South End. Ah, then you don't know England, mate. No foreigner knows anything about England. But you in England do not know much about us. Oh, that's true. Ah, but you're a funny lot, you know, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> that's just what I used to think about the English. Eh? How was that? Oh, it's a long story. Oh, don't be shy. Well, I have an hour before the ship talks. It all started early in 1939. I was a Stachanovite. What's that? Stachanovite? In New Russia, a workman who invents new methods of production is called Stachanovitz. And his achievement is brought to public notice. I am an engineer. And I had invented a new kind of propeller for use on icebreakers. And my government had ordered one to be made in England, and I was instructed to proceed there in all haste. On my way there, everyone I met had something to tell me about England and in England. There are lords and ladies, and they think the whole world belongs to them. The English have no sense of humor. They are a nation of shopkeepers. The cooking will ruin your digestion. The English climate will kill you. I knew it would be raining. I knew the peoples would be unfriendly. And when I got to England, everything was just as I expected. British passport? British passport, sir, mate. British passport this way. British passport only. In the train on the way to London, I sat and shivered and gazed with revulsion at the dismal scene and depressing faces around me. So these are the peoples on whose empire the sun never sets. My first impression of London did not help to improve matters. Well? Mrs. Flannel. Flannel. Oh. I am Ivan Dmitrievich Kuznetsov from Nizhny Petrovsk. Oh, you mean you're Mr. Kornikov? No, I am Ivan Dmitrievich Kuznetsov from Nizhny Petrovsk. How do you do? I'm very well, thank you. We only got your letter yesterday, Mr. Kornikov. Well, you'd uh, better come in. I'll show you your room. Nice and cosy, as you can see. Home from home. All modern conveniences, good, plain English cooking, none of your fancy stuff. Um, uh, and uh, the bathroom is on the next floor. Not that foreigners. And uh, for gas, you put a shilling in the slot. No music is permitted after 10 o'clock. 
Supper is at seven. We'll be ready in a moment. This is your room. We don't like our lodgers being late. This is a respectable house. We don't allow any goings on. After reporting to our trade delegation, I found my way to the shipbuilder's office. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, excuse me. You are the big shipbuilding firm? People say so. <laughs> then why is your office so small and so dusty? Well, I suppose it's always been like that. I see. What can I do for you, sir? Oh, I'm Ivan Dmitrievich Kuznetsov from Nizhny Petrovsk. I have come about a ship. What ship? The one we have ordered. Oh, you better drop us a line. But is there nobody I can see? No, not now, no. But no. I want to see Mr. The Manager. Yeah. I have letter of introduction. Uh, Mr. Tester was expected here today, sir. I don't think he'll be coming now. Don't the managers work in your country? Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Miss Anne. Good morning, Percy. How's the boxing? All right, thank you. Isn't it a wonderful morning? And the office looks... Oh, well, I suppose all offices look much the same. I can't understand how anybody manages to stay oh. in them. And you've been here for 20 years. 23, Miss Anne. 23. <laughs> look, would you post this for me? I don't think I've got the address quite right. It's the Girls' Friendly Society. Oh, yes, And yes. would you get on to the Stepney Slum clearance people for me and let them know I'll be along sometime this morning? Yes. And um, I must get some flowers sent to this hospital. Mrs. Finnegan. Excuse me. I am urgent. Are you? How urgent? I'm Russian. Oh, I see. Here's the address. Yes. Here are those two tickets for the flower show I promised you. Oh, you're very I kind. Will like oh, good, you? I will come back tomorrow. Oh, good. I will come back tomorrow. Very good, sir. Thank you for laughing, miss. What do you mean? Eight million people in London, and for two days, nobody smiled at me, except one man who want to sell me insurance. You Russians like to be miserable. How do you spell Piccadilly? Two C's, two L's, miss. What you say is not true. Russians like to laugh very loud and very often. Do they? But in London, everybody is sad. Nobody smile, and everything is cheerful. It isn't. It is. Nobody even speak to me except to say no. Yes, thank you, sorry. What a shame. Tell me, how are your meetings going? Well, we're holding one lunchtime today in Hyde Park. I was wondering... Certainly, you... I'll come along and support you. Oh, are you sure your father wouldn't oh, mind? Oh, he probably would. We're but... going to protest to the government. Marvellous. I'll carry a banner. Oh, Miss Anne, do No, I'd love to. You come too. Hyde Park, lunchtime. Well, I must rush. A nicer person you couldn't meet. Tell me, please, how far is this Hyde Park? Oh, about two miles as the crow flies. Thank you. How far, please, as the feet walk? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm against it. You ask me why I'm against it? Well, I'll tell you. Because our government's composed of nincompoops, lunatics, muddlers, soppy kids. Now then. I've got a good solution. Yes, you have. Put a sock in it. We don't all shave in the morning, do we, sir? But you can't buy a razor blade after six o'clock unless it's for medicinal purposes. Why not? Because it's the law. But no one worries about the law when it applies to international affairs. We've been meeting here ever since 1928. 
and will go on doing it until the government takes action over Manchu Kuo. Over what? Manchu Kuo. Just think what Japan is allowed to do to it. What is it to do with you anyway? Well, it isn't right that one country should take another. He's quite yeah. right. It's nothing to do with us. What do you want to go not. meddling into other people's business for? It's your sort to start the wars. That's yeah, right. That's right. Mind Britain's business. Yeah. I prefer to mind Britain's honour. Get down, get down, get down, get down. You all go to be ashamed of yourselves. As soon as anybody tries to talk sense to you, you close your minds and become like stupid school children. Hold your hand now, naughty boy. Hold your it's hand people now, like you that go all the trouble in every country. Are you? you don't care what happens anywhere so long as you're all right. Get down, get this down. This is a free country and everyone is free to say what they like. Yes, but you haven't said anything we like yet. <laughs> our position in the world makes it our duty to help the weak. That's what foreigners think. That's right. That's the cause of all the trouble. Yes, they're ruddy foreigners. Right, ain't it, mate? What's the matter with you? I am rather foreigner. <laughs> That's got it. There now. You've had the unique opportunity of standing next to a foreigner whom you despise. Is he not like I you? Say. Is there anything to quit to be in this country? Thank you very much. Yes? Well, yes. I'm afraid you must find all this very puzzling. Yes. What would you like to do now? See the manager. Oh, yes, of course. Well, then you must come home with me. Yes? Yes. You see, he's my father. He won't be at the office now. At least I don't think so. Oh, dear, I'm in such a hurry. I'll meet you at Victoria Station, 418, platform 3. Put some things in a bag. Goodbye. That is my mother. That is my uncle Petya. And that is my uncle Paris. <laughs> Who's that? That is not nobody. <laughs> that is the church at Nizhny Petrovsk. <laughs> and that is Natasha. Is she your wife? Oh, no, thank you. I am not married. No, she is my sister. I have very strong view about marriage. Who have you? Oh, yes. Marriage is very serious business. Some bodies marry a girl because she has a pretty face or pretty carry-on, carry <laughs> but not me. I am not deceived. Are you a... A, a woman hater, then? Oh, no, I am a woman liker. But it is our duty to the state to make success of our lives. I would not marry a girl unless I discover her good partner. Very sensible. Well, let's hope you find a good partner over here. Oh, no, I am here only for work. Besides, I already am in love. Oh, yes. And she is here with me. Who oh, is yes. The one I am in love with. <laughs> she is beautiful. Look. My propeller. Barchester is an ancient town dating from pre-Roman days. I never knew that. The cathedral dates mainly from the 12th century, it has double transepts, raised fire, and presbytery. I never noticed. You do not know anything. I know everyone in the high street. Look. Here comes Admiral Wolf. He's a darling and runs the British Legion. Good afternoon, Admiral. Good afternoon, Admiral. Admiral. Anne. Give my love to your mother. I will. And here's Mr. Fuggle, the butcher. He's wonderful. He never sends you bills. Hello, Mr. Fuggle. Good afternoon, Miss Tisdall. Oh, there's Mrs. Elliston, who runs the Literary Society. She's perfectly poisonous. I wonder who that is. You know? That's Mrs. Toddy Beckett. You should see her playing bridge. <laughs> Hello. There's Mrs. Porson. What is truth? The bishop. Don't forget, right. I won't. A lecture. She will organize it. Oh, hello, Anne. Any nice new books? I want something that won't make me think. I don't think there's much danger of that. Got your daisy? Oh, hello, Miss Venter. Oh, thank you. You should have one, too, you know. No, I do not wish daisies. Oh, so. but you must. It's daisy day. 
Give a mite to save a mite. Thank you. Thank that you. was Miss Rowena Ventner. She's... Well, you've seen for yourself. your back. Mummy, this is Mr. Ivan. Mr. Ivan. He's staying to dinner. To dinner? Oh. He's Russian. Well, that's all right, dear. Come on, say how do you do. I'm Ivan Dmitrievich Kuznetsov from Nizhny Petrovsk. How do you do? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, that is nice. Well, I'm going to change. Yes. Well, uh, I expect you'd like to wash your head. No, I am quite clean. Oh, well, uh, you can wash in there. Excuse me one moment. This is Frost. This is Frost. Agnes. Yes, dear. Who's the young man in the hall? All I know is he's Russian and he's staying to dinner. I only hope he won't expect any special dishes. Some of these foreigners do, I believe. I once heard of a Siamese who'd never touch rice unless. What's the matter, dear? Aren't you feeling well? Did you say Russian? Yes. At least that's what Anne said. But it's not safe to let him in the house. Why not? Well, my dear, Russian, they spread things. When you alarm me. <laughs> Tired? Very. Had a hard day. What are your hours of work? I have no hours. Never stop working. But your trade union. Don't belong to one. But you must, otherwise they exploit you. <laughs> they exploit me, all right. And you do not mind? I've only got a few months before I retire, then I can spend all my time working in the garden. But if you retire, then you do not have to work in the garden anymore. On the contrary, if I retire, it's because of the garden. But that's silly. I beg your pardon. Granted. Hello, Daddy. I'm glad you two have made friends already. He is your Daddy? But of course. And who is this gentleman? Oh, Daddy, I'm so sorry. This is Mr. Ivan. He's Russian. Well, that's no excuse for being rude. What have you said? I thought he was the gardener in your house, not the manager. He does not look like a manager. So. You don't, you know, Daddy. What? Come along. Let's have a glass of sherry. That's what you two want. Dinner's nearly ready. Have a day. You'll have to hurry if you're going to get tidy. Yeah. Who's that queer fish, Mother? One of Anne's lame dogs, I suppose. I suppose so. Anne said he'd come to dinner, but I think that's an understatement. It was a very large bag. And how many children do you plan to have? Oh, 15 at least. But you mustn't ask things like that. Uh, why not? Because it isn't done. It is not done? <laughs> no. This is my mother-in-law, Mr. Ivan... Ivan Dmitrievich Kuznetsov from Nizhny Petrovsk. From Ovsk, really? Uh, how do you do? I'm very well, thank you. How do you do? <laughs> and this is my son, George. Uh, He's going to be a sailor. I am a sailor, Mother. And this is my daughter, Anne. Oh, but of course, you've met. <laughs> How do you do? I am very well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And this you. is Mr. Darkey. Oh, Mr. Darkey, yes, we have acquainted. <laughs> oh, very well, we'll go on. We won't wait for her, but I hope you're hungry, Mr. Ivan. Go along, but mother. I, I haven't had my share. Never mind, dear, you shall have mine. I wonder where Aunt Winnie is. Mrs. Frost. Mrs. Frost, I think I'd like something in my room. On a tray. Why, whatever's the matter, Miss Winnie? There's a Russian in there. People say the English are selfish, are you? Yes, I suppose I am selfish. They say also you are narrow-minded. Do you think so? 
<laughs> yes, I am in something. Yes, but you must admit we're tolerant of other people's criticism. Mm. We're perfectly willing to admit that everything's done much better in other countries. Ah, but do you believe it? We're always criticizing ourselves. In fact, we spend most of our time doing it. But my dear pretty girl, that is just why people accuse you of hypocrisy. Well, it's no good arguing about it. Foreigners take our self-criticism as their face value. They forget that we've done it for centuries, so they think we're effete and degenerate. Well, they do it at their own peril. Tum ta ra! Father's making a speech. I'm not making a speech, Agus. I'm merely saying we don't like rows. In fact, we'll do almost anything to avoid them. Put up with insults and everything. But you can go so far and no further. Then when our patience breaks... And we see the whites of their eyes. There! You want to fight? No, no, no. We don't want to fight anybody. Oh, so you don't want to fight for England? Well, when we think of England, we don't think of fights, we don't think of armies. What do you think of? Oh, I suppose the sort of things everyone likes. A field, a garden. I like the sea. <laughs> but you have conquered half the world. Conquered? We've never conquered anyone. We just happened to get there first. But your purpose in going there was conquest. It wasn't. The men who built our empire weren't doing it as, as conquerors. They were explorers, romantics, individualists. Nearly everything we've got is the result of some private adventure or other. They were profitable adventures. Well, the lands that have become part of the Empire haven't done too badly out of them either. No, be fair. We've had a pretty good idea of our duties towards them, I think. Oh, you know, when we were in the West Indies... Hush, dear. You're talking too much. Your pudding will get cold. Pudding is cold. It's meant to be cold, Mother. What's he doing now? He's in the dining room with Mr. Tisdall, showing him something in a box. Does it... does it tick? You see, as the duty of the forward propeller is to cause suction and thereby disrupt the pack ice by washing asunder the lowest layers of the frozen mask, I could solve my problem only by departing from the orthodox prope propeller action and apply to it the principle of turbine action in which the stream of water ejected by the screw will have directional stability. It has, of course, vague similarity with beam wireless, but it is essentially hydrodyna hydrodynamic. Well, it, it's certainly very revolutionary. It is. Do you think you can make it? Well, I should like to study your drawings. Good. I will leave you to do it now. No, 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 not now. I want to hear the news. Oh, the news? <laughs> Not so loud, dear. Das in Bezug auf das Ziel zu dicken deutsche Problem. Fallen die Geduld, der zu Ende ist. George! There you are, Daddy. Middlesex, 127 for one. Surrey, 212. That's better. Kept 302 for That's seven something we can all understand, eh? Oh. For three. <laughs> yeah. At Old Trafford, the match between Lancashire and Yorkshire has been abandoned owing to rain. Yorkshire, 274. Lancashire, 50 for no wicket. Gloucestershire, 426. Nottinghamshire, 213 for five. The Army, 306. The MCC, 202 for eight. Derbyshire, 308. And 92 for three wickets for more than 127. What's the matter? I do not know. There is something, something. I feel as if something has happened to me. What can it be? I do not know. There is. Uh, Revolution in my head. Oh. Oh, Mr. Ivan, your room's quite ready now. I'll take you up. I found some of Herbert's pajamas for you. Maybe a little large, but they're pure wool. <clears throat> Last night, I kissed your daughter. I must explain, it was not serious. Please forgive me. She is most pretty girl I have seen. And she is nice girl. But my heart is only interest in my work. Tell me now what you think of the designs. I've arranged you to meet my father-in-law at 12.30. Your father-in-law? Yes, Mr. Runnelow, the managing director at 12.30. Ah, good. Uh, not earlier? Not earlier. But please don't be late. Mr. Runnelow is a very punctual man. <laughs> 
Don't worry, Daddy. I'll see Mr. Evans there on time. <laughs> How do you feel this morning? I'm fine. Fine. What are your plans? I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> Me? I'm going to show you a few things. Come on. Good morning, Miss Anne. Morning, Tom. Look, uh, the committee wants you to give away the prizes at our Benevolent Fund dance on the 16th, will you? Oh, Tom, I'd love to. One bloke suggested Miss Presswick. You should have heard the bird he got. How's work? Her work's fine. If you call clocking in at nine and clocking out at six, work. Oh, I know I'm lucky with so many blokes out, but what's the good of having special training if you can't use it? It's a shame. Hey, Hobby. It's all right. It's the whole system that's wrong, Miss Anne. Now, in Russia, this couldn't happen. And why? Because in Russia, there's no private ownership. Do you know that in Russia, 88.7% of the population is fully employed? And do you know that in Tom, Russia, there is... I want to introduce you to Mr. Ivan Kuznetsov. From Russia. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I've got to get along. Uh, don't forget the 16th. I won't. <laughs> I like that young man. Because of Russia? No, because he is enthusiast. Well, I'll come and pick you up later on. Oh. Now listen, you must be very careful. I'm told my grandfather's a very hard businessman. Do not worry, I know how to deal with hard businessmen. Can we have a ride, Miss? Can we yes, jump in? Oh. Give you... Come on, please, let's jump in. Boy, we must wake up. Excuse me. Do you know where is Mr. Ranelow? I'm Ranelow. My dear sir, I beg your pardon. Mr. Kuzinski? Ivan Dmitrievich Kuznetsov from Nizhny Petrovsk. How do you do? I'm very well, thank you. How do you do? Are you sure you are the Mr. Ranelow I have to see? I suppose I must be. Am I? Do you care for a pinch? No, thank you. Quite right. It's a dreadful habit, but I'd rather like it. How do you like being in England? I don't, thank you. No, the climate is rather dreadful, isn't it? Did you come down on the 1021, stopping at Berridge, Steinbridge, Longsford and Medlicott? No. Ah, then you probably caught the 1040, changing at Croydon, and stopping at Wormbridge, Stopford, Langsham, Diddley and Fiddlechurch. No. This is an English joke. <laughs> joke? I wouldn't dream of such a thing. Then why do you talk about trains? Oh, I see. No, oh, I beg your pardon. To tell you the truth, trains are rather a hobby of mine. Do you ever hear of Bradshaw? Bradshaw? Yes, a great man. Engineer? No, no, no. He compiled this book. All the timetables of all the trains in England. I don't want to brag, but I know it by heart. Excuse me. You are what is called big businessman? I suppose so. You have inherited your position from your father. Well, no, as a matter of fact, my father was a parson, hadn't a penny. So I'm that terrible thing they call a self-made man. I don't understand the English. My dear fellow, who does? Well, anyway, I have to see you because of the ship. Oh, the ship? Yes, splendid. You must tell me about that sometime. I will tell you about it now. Now? Oh, no, not now, my dear fellow. It's lunchtime. Ah, come and meet my fellow director. Hello! This is Mr. Christian. How do you do? I'm very well, thank you. How do you do? Mr. Kuznikov and Mr. Walford. Uh, how do you do? I... How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> how do you do? I am very... 
<coughs> Luncheon is served, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> In you go. <laughs> Look here, about the ship. Uh, do you play golf, Mr. Kaprisky? <laughs> yes, come and have a game at Barnstead on Saturday. I think golf is silly. You hit ball as hard as you can and then walk miles and miles trying to find it in the bushes. <laughs> And about the ship. Yes, yes, the ship, of course. Well, now, I suggest that you and I adjourn to my room. You must let me teach you sometime. It's a remarkable game, quite easy. It's all a matter of swing. Great sportsmen, those two. Yes, I see. And now, to business. Oh, yes. Care for a pinch? Uh, no, thank you. Quite right. Dreadful heavy. I hate business, don't you? No, I like work. I used to once. I'm afraid I'm getting too old for it. But you still make a lot of money. Money, oh, my dear fellow. Money doesn't mean very much to me, never has done. But you are a millionaire. I never wanted to be one. Why did you work then? I don't know. Oh, yes, I suppose I do, though. There were certain things that I wanted rather badly. What things? Independence, garden, piano, books. Well then, if that is all you wanted, why did you not stop when you had enough to buy the things you talk about? I always wanted to, but one has certain responsibilities, you know, to one's employers, for instance. They would do just as well without you. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> you may be right. No, no, Mr. Ronaldo. What you want is more money, always more money. And you make it by exploiting others. There are good employers and bad employers, you know. There should be no employers. You should work for the good of other peoples, not for the good of yourself. Do you know what the motto of this firm is? No. Duty and service. It might almost be a communist slogan. It might. Ah, tea. I love tea, don't you? It is at once a beverage and a poem. I come here to talk about a ship, and all we have done is eat and drink. Hello, Grandpapa. My dear, I'm speechless. Isn't it marvelous? Do you like my dress? It looks old-fashioned. I'm wearing it at the pageant. I think it suits me. Well, even in a rag, you'd look marvelous. Well, I mean... Uh... You'll never know what you do mean. Run along, get me my bag, please. I left it in the car. All right, old girl. You make a very good husband one of these days. Who, Dick? Yes, perhaps he will, but not to me, darling. Now, don't tell me you're one of those women who don't believe in marriage. Marriage is a very serious business. Oh, is it? Well, I've got some work to do. Uh, Kuznetsky, you leave your plans and you'll hear full details from us in the morning. But you don't know even about my propeller. Oh, yes, I do. Mr. Tisdall told me all about it. Well, why did you waste the afternoon with me, then? But it wasn't wasted. I have found out the sort of fellow I'm dealing with. Goodbye. Oh, Grandpapa. I'm bringing Ivan to your house tonight. That's all right, isn't it? Of course, of course. Then, come here. Yes, Grandpapa. What are you up to? Nothing, Grandpapa. Absolutely nothing. Russia now produces 20% of the world output of steel. 23 and half percent. Really? And uh, what about coal? 17%. And the problem of electrification? We have built the Dniprostroy Dam, which supplies all the Ukraine. Wonderful. <coughs> ah, there you are. 
I hope you don't mind, Anne, but I've got one or two things I want to talk over with Mr. Kostrovsky. I've got your drawings in the study. How are you doing? Oh, all right. Did he propose? No, but he will. Won't be long now. Poetry and engineering. Perfect combination. Do you really know anything about it, engineering? I know something about ships. Thou wast not born for death, immortal bird. My gardens are famous for their nightingales. They've even been broadcast from here. Oh, so nightingales even broadcast in England. <laughs> Sometimes I feel I can talk to you. Thank you. And the next minute I know I cannot. But we have many things in common. Ships, ice currents, propellers. There is one Englishman who know about propellers. How <coughs> No. Uh, Ronaldo. That's funny. Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Not so very funny. You are the great Ronaldo? I suppose I must be. Ah, oh, how do you do? How do you do? I am very well, thank you. <laughs> and you have seen my drawings. I have. And you are going to make my propeller. No. No? Not in its present form. I'm afraid you'll have to make certain modifications. Modification? You haven't allowed sufficiently for the different rates of cooling of the two blades. You're bound to get distortion. Oh, but of course. There's considerable difference in weight between them. And the internal stresses set up will produce an inherent weakness in the screw. But, but the tensile strength of the metals will uh, take it. The, the, the stresses uh, uh, set up in manufacture are relatively small. Quite. And what about the effect of metal fatigue? You wake the family up. I cannot help being happy. Mr. Ronaldo knows what he is talking about, and I am happy. I'm glad. I also am glad. We understand each other. Oh, yes. That is very important. Yes. Marriage. Marriage is very serious business. Oh, very serious. Before I came to England, I... Yes? And now... Yes? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Crime and punishment, dear. All about a young Russian who spit open an old woman's skull with a hatchet. Good night, dear. Good night. For the next three weeks, I worked hard on the model with Tom. And at the end of that time... Senor Governor. It could not be better done. Even in Russia? No. Even in Russia, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I still say it's very revolutionary. Of course. We may have to machine the parts to be welded together. 
And they may not meet if the distortion is too great. Well, we'll take that risk. If it's humanly possible to do it, we'll do it. Good. Then I can report to the trade delegation that my work is finished and I can go back to Russia. But aren't you going to stay and see the propeller made? No, I must go back. Well, you know best. What about a glass of sherry? Thank you. Oh, oh thank you. Sir. Well, here's to the ship. And may she turn out a beauty. Oh, she must. For years, my peoples had to export many things that was hard for them to pay for ships like her. Have you drinking at this hour? Oh, oh yes. yes. That is how we do business in England. You know, if we are going to London, we'll have to hurry. Catching the 12.15? Yes. Stops at Bamstead and Croydon. You know, you'd much oh, better go be on the train. Oh, don't be tired, Grandpa. <laughs> Come on, Ivan. Uh, excuse me, Miss Anne. I hope you haven't forgotten about tonight. Tonight? Yeah, the Benevolent Fund dance. Everyone's looking forward to seeing you there. Oh, Tom, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I shan't be able to come. I, I've suddenly discovered that I've got a very important meeting in London with the RSPCA. So will you tell them I'm awfully sorry? They'll all be very disappointed. I am disappointed too. Why? I thought we were going to the theatre. Well, um, we'll go to the theatre another time. You come to the meeting instead. Have a good time. Have courage. What do you mean? You will suffer a little, then you will forget. But what kind of a meeting is this? It isn't a meeting. It's a review. But you told Tom. Yes, of course I did. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I see. Come on, get our seats. Two seats, please. There's only stalls left, 12 and 6. Nothing cheaper. Yes, sir. Here you are. Um, I thought you wanted two seats. Yes, I do. <laughs> for 25 shillings. 25 shillings for two seats for the theatre? Well, in Moscow, you get good seat for two shillings. Yes, well, people come here to enjoy themselves, so... Run, left. You're the sweetest angel heaven has sent. You're the thrill of my life. Take a look at my heart and you'll see. You're the wonder of wonders to me. And forever. 25 shillings for this. That great thrill of my I have the opportunity tonight to exploit a dormant or latent talent that has been very dormant and very latent with me for many years. Who is that man? It's Leslie Henson. He's terribly funny. He better be funny. 25 shillings. Now here is the piano for what I'm about to play, and I'm going to play it to you willy-nilly. <laughs> Why do people dress like this to laugh? Shh. The little composition I have chosen to execute is a piece of classical chamber music, which I'm sure will be highly, highly appreciated by such a very intelligent audience as I am facing this evening. <laughs> well, having got you partially on my side, I shall now break the bad news that I'm about to play Rachmaninoff's Prelude, better known to the intelligentsia, perhaps, as the Prelude of Rachmaninoff written, as you may well guess, by Rachmaninoff. Oh. <laughs> Rachmaninoff's prelude in Asia Minor. <laughs> Tell me, 
these people are happy? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Look at that woman. Well, anyway, she looks as if she is taking her dog for a walk. I think she's a very good dancer. <laughs> That's not the way to dance. <laughs> good evening, sir. Good evening. Two bitters, please. Very good, sir. I'm afraid we only have lager, sir. What would you like to eat, sir? We do not want anything, thank you. I'm sorry, sir, but you must, sir. Why do we must, sir? You must have something to eat, sir. That is, if you want to drink, sir. We must have something to eat, sir, if we want to drink. I don't see why, sir. It's the law, sir. We'll have some sandwiches, sir. Thank you, miss. Funny laws you have in England. I shouldn't let it worry you. Oh, but it does worry me. Why? Why? Because of the effect the laws have on you. See, I have been considering you. Considering me? Yes. Thinking of your good points and your bad points. Oh? What's your verdict? <laughs> well, my verdict on the whole is in your favor. Am I? Yes. I am now making a proposal to you. Yes, it is. But before I do, I must tell you something. What you did with Tom tonight was very wrong. Oh. Oh, but they can do quite well without me at the dance. Perhaps, but I think different. And my proposal is subject to certain conditions. First, that you tell Tom the truth about tonight and never do such thing again. Second, that you promise me to use less makeup. It does not go with your face. Third, that I have my teeth seen to. You suffer from toothache? And from brainstorms. You are making fun at me. Oh, no. I wouldn't dream of it. How could I possibly do such a thing? After all, remember who I'm with. And who are you with? The most priggish, conceited, egotistical man I've ever come across. You don't see anything. If you think I'll ever marry, with or without conditions, a pompous boor like you, you're very, very much mistaken. I am mistaken. I thought you were a wonderful girl. But now my eyes have opened and I see what you really are. All this kindness, all this generosity of yours means nothing. You have never done kind thing in your life. You have only enjoyed being Big lady distributing her charity to the poor. Look at the way you let down all those people who expect you tonight. No, no, you're heartless, hypocritical, and hysterical. Well, at least I'm not smug, humorless, and, and, and mean. You're selfish. You're, you're a bull. You're shouting. Your beer. Well. And how did you enjoy yourself last night? Oh, very much, thank you. Grandpapa, why do I always do the opposite of what I really want to do? Because, darling, you sometimes let yourself be governed by your vanity and not your heart. Oh, well, that's all over now. This way, sir. What is happening? Oh, uh, it's the pageant, sir. What? Uh, the pageant, sir. Uh, do you know what a pageant is? Pageant? Oh, no. Well, uh, it's when a lot of people get dressed up in fancy costumes. Uh, Lady Godiva and such like. And they sort of play act various historical happenings. Well, why is it with that? I don't know, I'm sure, sir. Ah, there's Mr. Runnell, though, sir. Ah, oh, couldn't it's glad to see you. Come along. I have come to talk about the metal for the propeller. Uh, delighted, my dear, I'm delighted. But not just at this moment. We are in the midst of cataclysmic events. Come and join us. Good afternoon. Oh, no, please, thank you. I, I'm not very happy. None of us are, my dear fellow. This is a pageant.
But why do you have it if you do not like it? We English, my dear fellow, have a regrettable tendency to indulge in matters historical. And so, this afternoon, you will see the Roman occupation of Britain, the Black Danes, an old English fair, welcome to Queen Elizabeth, and the stagecoach bringing the news of Waterloo, followed by a tableau of spirits of peace, of harmony, of the District Nursing Association and the Women's Institutes, all devised, written and produced by Rowena Bentham. Quiet, quiet, please, I will not have this chatter. <coughs> now, kindly remember, ballad singers, tale tellers, jongleurs, dancers, fortune tellers, puppet showmen to the left. Oh, Mr. Bishop, please try and look natural. You're a soldier of Rome now, not an income tax collector. <laughs> <laughs> the raven! The raven! Where's the raven? Coming, Miss Ventnor. Oh, thank you. Now, remember, all of you, when you speak, I want your speech to be dynamic. Is that quite clear? Yes. Uh, all right, then. Tell the master of music we are ready. What is she doing? Chastity and the Graces, Apollo and the Muses, welcome Queen Elizabeth. Why? Father. <laughs> oh, All hail Apollo and ye Muses nine. Shoot forth thy beams and let thy radiance shine. All hail, fair chastity, and welcome be thou and thy sisters to our revelry. Have a good time with the boyfriend last night? Charming. Well, sorry. I always thought he looked a bit of a kid. Don't be idiotic, he's nothing of a kind. Oh, isn't he? Oh, of course not. I mean, uh... But lo, but lo, the great Gloriana comes. <laughs> Let us raise a pian in honor of the Virgin Queen. One, two, three, four. Now is the month of May when Mary dance a play. Now is the month of May when Mary dance a play. It's with his bowlers on the green grass. My loyal people. Oh, my horse! Back horse, back! Back! Oh, shame on you! Please. I have had enough. Well, that's as good an excuse as any. Now remember, the moment you hear the news that the Battle of Waterloo has been won, I want you all to rejoice. Crowd on! Ah, Mr. Kostrakovsky, there you are. Anne's just been telling me about the lovely time you had in town, you lucky dog. I am not a lucky dog, and I had a most horrible time. What's that? Oh, now, look, don't let's get insulting again. It's really too silly. Lady Blanche, kindly get into the carriage. We are not here to enjoy ourselves. Who's been insulting who? She is the most insulting woman I have ever met. Will you repeat that? Yes, she is the most insulting woman I have ever met. Will you repeat that? Is it that you are deaf or that you cannot hear? She is like all English women, cold, unsincere, with no heart. I'm gonna punch you on the nose. I have news for you. What oh, news? Glorious news. The Battle of Waterloo. Yes, yes. yes. We did! To one awful moment, I thought we'd lost. Great. Oh, 
Oh, stranger, what have you done? I have pushed him into the water. That's not cricket. We were not playing cricket. The trouble with your peoples is that you're hidebound, convention filled. You shelter with phrases and habits, and you don't know even what they mean. Not done, not cricket. You say them only because your father said them. This pageant, why do you make it? Because you make one every year. It does not matter if it's all peoples. You're living in the past. It is more easier, more comfortable, so more attractive. But you are losing the present. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. I have come to make formal apology. No matter what my personal views are, I had no right to express them publicly. But, my dear fellow, I was delighted. Delighted. I haven't enjoyed myself so much for years. I will report myself for my behavior to a trade delegation. No, no, don't do that. Oh, yes. I must. Good Soviet citizen always admit his mistake. I have written letters of apology to all peoples concerned, except, except Anne. I see. You know, my dear boy, you did make a mistake about her. Two, in fact. You began by taking her at her face value, which of course was just what she wanted. And then when you found that she wasn't what you thought, you jumped to the conclusion that she was the exact opposite. Whereas, in point of fact, Anne is a mixture, like you or me, or any other human being. And I wonder if you're not making the same mistake about England. Well, anyhow, it is all finished now. Next week, I will be back in Russia. I'm sorry you're going away. I leave the propeller in your hands. Good hands. Well, if you must go, I suppose you must. We've got some very good trains from here to the south coast. There's the 1021 for Dover stopping. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, you'll find it. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Ivan. I've just popped along to say goodbye. Wish I was coming with you. Sorry, I'll go. I am not sorry. Oh. oh, there have been good things. Our work together was good. <laughs> but it is dead here. Whereas in Russia... Ah. In Russia, I think the heart is alive. It's all as bad as you think, you know. It's sleepy, perhaps, but... Hmm. Maybe something will happen soon to wake you up, will it? But will you wake up? I don't know. We might. So long, Russia. Hello, hello! So there you are. Well, I come and wish you a pleasant journey. No hard feelings, I hope. Oh, I appreciate it. You are a sportsman. Not at all, old boy. Look here, your train's not due yet. Got time for a quick one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> two bitters, please. <laughs> Make it two teas, then. <laughs> Laws and ass. Where have you, Jiffy? Get you something to read. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, girl. Have you long. Hello. Hello. Grandfather asked me to come and see you off. He's very sorry he couldn't come himself, and um, I thought... Well, anyway, I wanted to say goodbye. Oh, yes, and I too. Oh, this belongs to Mr. Christie, really. Oh? <laughs> the whole world's in such a mess, isn't it? Looks as if we're going to have a war. Yes. Still. You'll be a long way away, won't you? Yes, a very long way. It's a pity you can't stay in Barchester till your ship's built. Yes, it's a pity, <laughs> there are compensations. You haven't been very happy in England, have you? <sighs> no. It's partly my fault. Oh, why do you say that? You have been very nice. It is simply that I did not understand. I hope you will excuse me. Of course. 
We need never refer to it again, need we? I suppose we will not have much opportunity. No, I suppose we shall. Oh, Mr. Darkie, come to say goodbye. <laughs> I shall miss you, will you? What did you say? Nothing. There you are. Punch. Keep it laughing all the way. Thank you. Leave it all. I'll get your luggage. Oh, oh. There you are, old boy. Have a good trip. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. I will. Goodbye. During the months that followed, there was plenty of work to do. Tovarish Stalin said we had to be ready. War had broken out. Everybody expected the English to back out at the last moment, but somehow the strange English did not back out. A year later, when I received a telegram ordering me to return to England, as the ship was nearly ready and the propeller was giving trouble, all Europe was in the hands of Germany. All of it except England. But in the first days of September 1940, as I was passing through Germany on my way to England, it seemed as if England is finished. The Führer says we will be in London on the 15th of September. It's only a matter of days. Reports from England confirm that the starving population is panic-stricken. think I would come back? Well, I didn't really know. <laughs> Are you married yet? No. Oh, you had better hurry up or you will remain maiden. Yes. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you? To my hotel. Oh, what nonsense. You're coming to stay with us. Oh. Your room's still there. Oh. <laughs> you will come, won't you? You are very kind. <laughs> Thank you. War has not changed the high street very much. What's that? That's a dogfight. They are enemy planes? Yes. They come over every afternoon. Here's Admiral Wolcott. Good afternoon, no, no. Admiral. Glad to see you back, Kornikov. <laughs> Bit of a do on up there. Yeah. I'm just off the post. He's in charge of the ARP. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Fuggle. Good afternoon, Miss Tisdall. He's had none too easy a time. And Mrs. Pawson. Hello. Back again? Yes. She's never stopped organizing canteens and things. I work in one at the shipyards. Do you? Come on, if we hurry up, we'll just be in time for tea. Do you still drink tea? Oh, yes, quartz. Are they norks or crosses? Oh, there's Spitz on their way to the channel. What does he say? Spitz, dear. Huh? Disgusting child. <laughs> Mummy. Yes, Mommy, look. Hello. Mr. Spun. Oh, Mr. Darkie. Nice Where have you sprung from? From Germany. Oh. Really? And what sort of weather have you been having over there? Oh, not bad. Oh. Is it true that the Jerry's make sausages out of dogs? There is a rumor. <laughs> I never believe a rumor unless it's official. Oh. Come and have some tea. Yes, Thank you must you. be starving. No, you are starving. Are we? Dr. Goebbels must have told you that. There's lots of things we can't have, but we're not starving, thank goodness. Oh. I am. How are you? How is the family? Well, George is in the Navy. Anne does canteen work, and, and we grow vegetables. Oh. Are you not frightened of the area? We're terrified. Sugar? Uh, no, sir. You haven't any lemon, you know. Oh. Do have some. No. Uh, don't let him have my ration. <laughs> now, you children, you've had your tea. You run away and play. I know. Let's pretend we're it now and annoy everybody. I. Yes, but not here, not here. Oh. And mind my cabbages. 
<laughs> Who are those children? And the vacuees. <coughs> and, oh, yes. And where is Mr. Tisdall? He's at the yard. But he always comes home for tea. No, not anymore, not now. Ah, I must see the ship. Oh, she's turned out such a beauty. Hmm? I'll take you down to the shipyard after tea to have a look at her. Good. <laughs> when war was declared, I really did not think it would go on with the job. Well, things were a bit awkward at first. All the railway timetables were upset for one thing, trains <laughs> stopping all over the place. Still, a contract's a contract, and Britain always delivers the goods, you know. Dreadful phrase. The Germans will try to invade you. Let's hope so. But you are alone against them. Well, we know where we stand, and don't forget we've certain things on our side too. Tradition? Yes. It's a living thing. Duty and service. Ah, ah, the communist slogan. Exactly. <laughs> if only we had more arms. If some of these fellows in the government had their way, we'd still be fighting with bows and arrows. You are against the government? No, no, I'm with them all right, but it doesn't do to let them know it. <laughs> We've got to keep after them all the time. Look at the income tax, for instance. Ten shillings in the pound. It's outrageous. But it is to defend your country. Exactly. It ought to be twelve and sixpence at least. Far away now! You are building many ships? Yes, we are working overtime. But it is too late. The war is nearly lost for you. No, that isn't what we think in Barchester. You come along to my house tonight and I'll show you what we think. Well, I, if it isn't old Ivan, <laughs> you're just in time. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. How's everything in... In Russia? <laughs> Still dreaming about Russia? Well, as a matter of fact, I've been a bit too busy to dream about anything except your blasted propeller. Oh, no. Look at this. You see, here's our spot of trouble. The blades are distorted too much. The gap between the webs is too big. Welding is impossible. I always said the design was too revolutionary. You do not think you can make it? Don't worry. We'll go on trying till we do. The English never know when they are beaten. Exactly. Sorry. Are those your planes? Theirs, I think. <laughs> Sounds like a raid. What did you say? A raid. Oh. Oh, double the speed. Right. There go the sirens. I must go. I'm on duty. Sorry to break up the game. Excuse me. I will come, Bruce. No, no, no. You stay here and help Mr. Ranello entertain the ladies. The microphone's in position, sir. Uh, we tested it out and uh, it's all okay. Thank you. Will you let Miss Harrison know they're ready for her now? Very good, sir. Uh, should the raid continue, sir, and Miss Beatrice Harrison and the two gentlemen from Broadcasting House have to spend the night, will they sleep under the staircase, sir, or under the billiard table? I leave that to your judgment, too. Very good, sir. I still do not understand what all this is about. They're broadcasting the nightingales from the garden. Miss Harrison's going to play her cello to them. Thereupon, all being well, the nightingales will sing. Here I am, quite ready. Let me take that for you. No, thank mm. you. Don't you think the guns will disturb the birds? No, not a bit. Oh, Toombs, better turn the lights out first. Very good, sir. Hello, Control. Everything's okay now. It's all yours. Yes, you probably will get some interference. There's a blitz on down here. I hope we won't stop the birds from doing their stuff. Miss Harrison's just going to begin. But surely, with the raid on. My dear fellow, the radio public must never be disappointed, blitz or no blitz. We're interrupting the program to take you over to hear the song of the nightingale.
We've dropped some incendiaries in the shipyard. I'm going down. Oh, I'll come yes. with you. No, no, no. You stay here. No, I will not stay but here. My... Fortunately, the main structure of the ship's on damage. Are you hurt? No, no, no. It's only a scratch. <laughs> All part of the game, eh? Game? Well, call it what you like. I say, how many fire bombs do you put out? Twenty-nine. It's just a question of approach. Of course, you concentrate too much on sand. Well, that's funny, because I got thirty-eight. The trouble with you is, you know, that you uh, don't keep your eye on the bomb. I'm awfully sorry. I'm afraid this means we shall be late for the delivery of the ship. Such a thing's never happened before. You see it yourself. Yes. I have seen. However, we'll get right down to it. Don't you worry, we'll do our best for you. I'm dying for a cup of tea. Ah, oh, Sybil, working you overtime? <laughs> now, my dear, a nice cup of tea for me, please. Care for a pinch? Thanks, I'm not. I'm on my do. Thanks. Ah, okay. Are you all right, Grandpa? Oh, yes, 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 nothing. No milk, I know. What about sugar? No, thank you. Do you know you are a nice girl? Yes, I do. I can't think why nobody has married you. Plenty of time. He has money, position. Why don't you? Because I happen to love someone else. Do you really? Hmm. And does he love you? No. Oh, that's bad. Never mind. I will take you back to Russia with me. Oh, but I couldn't come, not now. <laughs> I know. I mean... He will love you in the end, and everything will be all right. I will come and be best man at your wedding. Darling, don't you think you ought to go home now? Hmm? It's seven o'clock. Your mother will be looking for you. Oh, yes. Can I have some more milk, please? Yes, of course you, you can. Can I buy you on it? Yes, that's okay by me. Outside. I've been accepted, Mother. Of course you've been accepted, dear. Who by? The Wrens. The Wrens? Oh, Anne. What's that? Yes, Mother. Means I shall be leaving home for a little while. Speak clearly, Anne. I've joined up, Grandmama. She's sickening for something. In the months that followed, it was work. Hard work. All the time. By June, work on the ship was nearing completion. Only the propeller was still giving trouble. Let's hope they finish it before Jerry invades us. And he won't try. You take my word for it. Little old little will go for Russia. Then, one beautiful Sunday morning, as I walked back from the yard where I had been working all night. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Beckett. Good morning. Did you hear the seven o'clock? No. Why? Oh, nothing. That is, I mean, it's a lovely morning, isn't it? I'm sorry. Shocking business. My poor boy. I knew it. I knew it all along. What has happened? Has everyone gone mad? Germany attacked Russia at dawn today. We're terribly sorry. Oh, 
Oh, you need not be sorry. We shall defend ourselves. Won't you be pleased? Really, will you do you mean? Well, aren't the Russians going to be our allies now? Oh, no. Not that. You do not like our way of life. Church is making a speech tonight. We shall see. He will say he is very sorry. But no. You cannot help us. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Winston Churchill. It follows, therefore, that we shall give whatever help we can to Russia and to the Russian people. We shall appeal to all our friends and allies in every part of the world to take the same course and pursue it as we shall, faithfully and steadfastly to the end. We have offered to the government of Soviet Russia any technical or economic assistance which is in our power and which is likely to be of service to them. We shall bomb Germany by day as well as by night in ever increasing measure, casting upon them month by month a heavier discharge of bombs and making the German people taste and gulp each I month. I hope they heard the that in Nizhny Petrovsk. They have showered upon mankind. It's my hometown, you know. And therefore, what we need is more guns, more planes, more tanks, and more ships. Yeah! All right, boys, thank you. Here in this shipyard, we've only one desire, to make as many ships as quickly as possible. And we hope that our new production committees will help us to avoid bottlenecks. So, may I hope that this ship will be built by the 15th of the next month? Yes, I can safely promise you that. It is very important. We need icebreakers to keep our northern route open. Well, I consider the services should come first. Oh, but we give our pad in aid of the cottage hospital. Yeah, there is a war on, you know, dear. I'm quite aware of that, my dear. But, the but I always it. say that charity should begin at home. I know you do, dear. I know you do. If I found well, well, you all seem pregnant. to have forgotten that this is my pageant. I think the money should be given towards the little Russian boat that's being built here in our own Barchester. Uh, what a delicious scheme. Quietly. I've given birth to an idea. We have all got to know and like Mr. Ivan, haven't we? Yes. We look upon him as our friend. And now he is more than a friend. He is an ally. Don't you think it would be a good idea if we adopt his town? Nizhny Petrovsk? Yes, I'm right here. <laughs> of Britain, the Black Danes, welcome to Queen Elizabeth, and you're just going to see the stagecoach bringing the news of Waterloo. I expect you'll find we've won, we usually manage to. But we had all this last time. Well, we always have it. However, this time the finale is quite different. The Battle of Waterloo! Yes, yes! yes. Who won it? We did! <laughs> Your turn next, you'd better be getting round behind. Quiet, quiet, please. <laughs> Thank you. Now, kindly remember that you are now transferred to my command. Uh, Czechs, Norwegians, Belgians, where are the free French? Free French, you see? France, you see? Yes. Oh. This is possible. Yes, Miss Vetter. What are you doing with the Poles? Organizing them. I am here to do that. Oh, yeah. oh. Yes, kindly stop smoking. You are not in the army now. Hello? And how 
a marvel. Did you run away like Cinderella? Believe it or not, a week's leave. Ah, how wonderful. The uniform suits you. I'm glad. <laughs> and I admire you for sticking to your job. Victory, freedom to your rostrum. Now everyone positions. <laughs> you know, the last time I saw you, it was like I had never seen you before, with all the superficial things gone away. A very nice person. Oh, I do wish you'd stop calling me a very nice person. I'm not. But you are a very nice person. Not a bit. Oh, and what does the man you love think about it? Oh, he doesn't think at all. Oh, he must be a fool. He is. <laughs> How are you? I am fine. You know, tomorrow we test the propeller for the last time, and everything I know will be all right. Oh, Ivan, you must be so happy. Yes, I am. You know, I wonder. If I have to go tomorrow to the trade delegation to report. And if you could come up, it would not be much fun for you, but we could spend the evening together and come back here by the last train. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, all right. If you can't, you can't. Oh, but I can. I can. Oh. <laughs> Unfurl banners and <laughs> turn about forward march. Miss Benton. Yes? Miss Benton, what shall I play when Mr. Kornikoff comes on? It's a Russian national anthem, of course. But I don't know it. Oh, don't be absurd, man. Everyone knows the Russian national anthem. What is it? What is it? Is it, is it? You ask me? Mr. Funnel, can't you tell this man what the Russian national anthem is? The international. Ah, uh, what did I tell you? Oh, you can't play the international, you know. Can't we? Why not? The bishop might not like it. He told me so explicitly. He said I might not like it. Anyhow, I don't know it. I know a little Russian song. No, oh, who's running this pageant? Are you or am I? Miss Bentner, what shall I play? Well, if you don't know the anthem, and the bishop doesn't like it, play the next best thing to it. Very well, Miss Bentner. Oh. <clears throat> now let victory be unveiled. Petrovsk, the town that the citizens of Barchester have adopted. Mr. Ivan Kornikov. pleasure in announcing that the total sum collected amounts to 820 pounds, 16 shillings and fourpence. <clears throat> but an anonymous donor, whom we all know as a lover of bird life, <laughs> has kindly made a further donation to bring the sum to the round figure of 1,000 pounds. As you see, here it is all in one note. And now I'm going to ask Mr. Kuznetsov to accept it on behalf of Nijni Protovsk, with the brotherly, and may I add sisterly, good wishes of the citizens of Barchester. The next day, the test was on. It'll be all right this time, Roger. <laughs> Morning, Steve, Van. Hello. If it don't work this time, we'll take one from a toy model and drive it with a bit of elastic. <laughs> all right, carry on, Tom. Five, seven, ten, twelve, 
14. 16. That's there. If the launching is on the 15th, you will have to fit an old type propeller. I'm afraid so. Bit of a blow to you, old fellow, I'm afraid. Yes. Well, goodbye. But you're not going now? Oh, yes. I must go immediately to report to the trade delegation, and uh, there is war. I must go back at once to Russia. Well, come and have dinner with me tonight, anyway. Oh, thank you. I have tonight to go to the theater and uh, laugh like a pussycat. Oh, I'm so happy I can't tell you. Yes, yes. This must be a very happy evening. Is anything better? No, no. Why should that be? Ladies and gentlemen, the Iraq men in Australia. <laughs> Still in Asia Minor. <laughs> melancholy, I think, does not arise out of an aversion from life. They appreciate its value, but they ever feel its... Uh, Transience? Yes. Golden boys and girls all must, as chimney sweepers, come to dust. to enjoy if only one knows how. Yes. How shall I act and why? All mankind asks this question. And the solution the English have found is a sort of religion of their own. Religion? Yes, it's a practical religion, really. It's a kind of compromise. The religion of making the best of things. To them, it is a duty. Such an ordinary word, duty. And yet it means so much. So much. And yes. Very well, then I'll tell you something. I'm in love with you, Ivan. Just like that? Forget all about me. So, you see, I am a failure. What you would call a flop. Oh, I know it's horribly disappointing for you. 
But you mustn't make a tragedy out of it. I do not make it. For me, it is one. You see, I am not supposed to fail. I am Stahanovite. And here, I represent my country. What are you going to do? There is a ship sailing for Russia from Gravesend. So. Aren't you coming down for the launching? Oh, my dear. What for? I did not help the ship. They have to install the old type propeller. I'm glad I will not see it. All of the people in Barchester have been so kind to me. I've always thought of you as a person who would never give up. Please promise me you'll go on trying. I know it'll take courage, real courage to do that. But you will, won't you? Please. All right. I will. I'll have to hurry. Goodbye, and thank you for a lovely evening. I'll get special leave for the launching, so you will come down, won't you? Yes. Yeah. Goodbye. And don't give up. Because we must have icebreakers to keep our northern routes open. The blades have distorted too much. I always said the design was too revolutionary. The gap between the webs is too great. I've always thought of you as a person who would never give up. <laughs> I'm drinking tea all night. It's rationed, you know. I am sorry. It is so important. You're telling me. Hello. Who? What? Oh, who's in sir? Yes, well, bless my soul. Huh? Yes? Yes? No. What? Can't you train? Yes, there's one at four o'clock. Four, four five, to be precise. But it's a milk train, I'm afraid. It stops at every station, you know. Village, Steinbridge, Longstreet, Medicate, Langstreet, Tilly, Fiddle, Church, and so on. Very pretty. And perfectly simple. But then, of course, the simplest things are always the hardest to think of. It is also hard that it should come too late. Too late? What do you mean? The launching is on the 15th. Well, what of it? The other propeller is already being fitted. Oh, but don't go into that now. Let's get our drawings straight first. Let's see that it works. Here, Tom, bring me those specifications. Bob, some paper. Now then. Let's get down to it. <laughs> Yeah. 
Get prints out from the machine shop, Arthur Jenkins and the others. Eight prints. Yes, sir. Well, I haven't enjoyed myself so much for years. This calls for a little celebration. Well, the Benevolent Fund dance is on tonight, sir. You can hear the band from here. So you can. And Anne is giving away the prize. Yes. What's all this about? You've got that propeller right at last. Put it in hand at once, will you? Impossible. Well, impossible always takes a little longer. Well, you seem to forget the launching's on the 15th. It's out of the question. My dear Herbert, I happen to be chairman of this company. And I still tell you it's out of the question. To start with, the other propellers practically installed. All that work to have to be undone. Say nothing of the casting. Every job we've got now is for the Admiralty, and you know what that means. The men have been working without a break for months now. It simply wouldn't be fair to ask them to do it. Of course, if they've got six hands each. Sorry, Yvonne. Sorry, cousin, sorry. Will you be wanting me any more tonight, Mr. Runner? Uh, no, Tom, you can go to bed. To bed? Oh, yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the last prize tonight, the spot waltz, Mr. and Mrs. Jim Webb. Good old Jim! Good old Jim! Good old Jim! Nice job, Tom. Well done, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, nice oh. to see you home, Jim. You're welcome, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, the gentlemen's excuse me, Nance. to stop the dance, but uh, Tom Sellers has just arrived with something very important to say to you all. Now, come on, Tom. Well, it's like this. You all know the trouble we've had casting the propeller for the icebreaker. And you all know that when the last test was unsuccessful, they decided to scrap it and fit an old one. Now, Mr. Ivan has hit on a solution, and the governor and the rest of us think it's the right one at last. Now, the ship's got to be launched by the 15th. We've built her for Russia, and we don't want to send her an old-fashioned thing, do we? We want to send her the newest and the best, don't we? Yes, sure. Yeah, now, it's going to mean a hell of a lot of work if we're going to refit it in time. Do you think we can do it? Well, what are you waiting for? My girls will do it, I know. Where the girls are, my boys won't be far behind. <laughs> you bet we won't. <laughs> <laughs> my boys will do their bit. So will mine. And mine. Don't you worry, Tom. We'll get the ship done. Oh, Andy! <laughs> Five, seven, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen. That's good enough. Well, it's done the trick. Nice work. Very good, Eva. <laughs> well, we said we'd get the job through by the 15th. And thanks to you all, your loyalty and enthusiasm, we've done it. <laughs> it's only another proof of this country's determination to do everything possible to help our friends and allies, the brave Russian people. Yeah. And now, 
I know you'd like to hear a few words from a man who came to us as a stranger, but who is leaving us as a friend. Ivan Kuznetsov. <laughs> friends, and you really are my friends, all of you. When I came to your country, I was filled with misconceptions and prejudices. But now that I have got to know you, I know that you are a grand, a great people. <laughs> Don't blush now. Don't look embarrassed. I must tell you, much of the world thinks that you care only about money. And you care much more about cricket, or nightingales, or a good job well done. Much of the world thinks that you are perfidious and hypocritical. And you are warm and kindly. And do you know why the world thinks these things? Because you want it to. It amuses you. It pleases that dreadful sense of humor of yours. And that, that sense of humor is perhaps the guiding factor of your lives. If you can laugh at life and at yourselves, you can be tolerant. If you can laugh, you must hate persecution. You must love decency. Above all, you must love freedom. For there is no laughter where there is no freedom. Now, my people, the people of Russia, they also love to laugh. And they will fight to the death rather than surrender their right to laugh. Today we are allies, friends. Let us remain friends. Let us fight together in the years to come and then laugh together in the years afterwards. Fight selfishness and greed and violence and then laugh them out of existence. <laughs> Will you please name the ship? I name you Druzhba. Friendship. In honor of our Anglo-Soviet friendship. Long may you sail. <laughs> There she is, the Druzhba. Well, we're pals now, and I reckon we should stay pals when this blinking war's over. I reckon so too. Aye, there's a hell of a lot we can learn from each other, mate. And there's a hell of a lot we can do working together. For the good of ourselves and the rest of mankind. So long, comrade. So long, mate. 